Good morning and welcome to our Quantum STEAM Lab dedication ceremony. Today marks the beginning and really the milestone, the fruition of a waking dream. The aim of our STEAM Lab is to develop students in three primary ways. Cognitive development, character development, and cultural development. I want to thank the Limbach Foundation for funding many of the materials and resources in this lab. If it was not for that award, which I received through the Limbach Award for Distinguished Principals one year ago, this day would not be possible. I also want to thank the fund at the School District of Philadelphia for funding other aspects of this lab through a previous grant. We like the right grants here at the Rowan School. I want to thank our colleagues at Arbery Arboretum for the willingness to collaborate with us. Thank you very much for being here today. It is through this partnership that our young people will learn horticulture and food science, but more than that, will learn about the genius of men like George Washington Carver and my aunt, Edna Lewis. I want to thank our parents who many of them are watching via YouTube this morning, for allowing us as educators to co-labor with you in the development of your children. I also want to thank the scientists at the Quantum Biology Laboratory at Howard University for their willingness to collaborate with us as expert consultants and mentors. It is through our partnership with Howard University that our young people will not only learn how to master existing science, but they will also learn how to design and create new science, new knowledge, new ways of computing, new materials, and new ways of thinking. Our young people will learn about Einstein and Schrodinger, but more than that, they will learn that Scientific knowledge and history is not rooted in simply one narrative. They will learn about the genius of Arab, Indian, and African scientists who have paved the way for many of the benefits we have today. As Persian scientists of antiquity followed a star to search for a Jewish king, all young people will follow their stars and use the tools of science, philosophy, and technology to make of us and ourselves a better world. At this time, I want to introduce the STEAM team. We have, come over here, Ms. Barian. We have Mr. Nisha Barian, who is a mathematics and science school-based teacher leader. We have Ms. Karen Rufino, who is the finest vir uh, visual arts teacher in the United States of America. We have Miss Missy Brown, who is our school technology coordinator. We want to welcome her. She makes sure that every student has a laptop to use that works. And then finally, in short, and definitely not least, I want to also welcome Mrs. Rashida Perkins, who is our special education liaison who makes sure that all of our students, even those with learning differences, have access to these interactive and innovative learning opportunities. Thank you, team. Now I want to introduce a budding scientist, the person who is going to represent our mistress of ceremonies for today, a phenomenal fourth grade student, Ms. Madison Nettles. Let's show her some love. Hi, I'm Madison Nettles, and I'm going to be telling you guys what is STEAM. STEAM has five words in it, and those words are science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And now we are going to welcome our Arbery Connection, Ms. Heather Zimmerman and Ms. Gail Henson. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us here today. 
I'm Heather Zimmerman. I'm the executive director of Aubrey Arboretum. It is a 56 acre arboretum in Germantown and East Mount Airy. We have forest and the historic water course. We have a 16 acre farm. Preparing our future leaders for managing our natural resources and our agricultural assets is imperative to the health and well being of society. So we're really pleased to be part of this program. And now I'd like to introduce Chef Gail Henson, educator, advocate, innovator, who is the leader of this program here at Rowan for Aubrey. Hello, uh, friends and family of Rowan Elementary School. Uh, my name is Gail Jones Henson. I am a chef and a culinary educator. And I'm uh, very proud and happy to be here um, to speak on behalf of this collaboration between uh, Rowan Elementary School uh, and its staff uh, and its uh, youth and uh, Arbery Arboretum and myself. Um, we actually, this uh, brainchild sort of developed um, as a passing thought when I was involved in a youth development program at Arbery Arboretum, and um, I, I was introduced to Dr. Murray. And you know, I sort of posed a small but big question to him at one point, um, if he would be interested in developing um, a program here at Rowan for um, the kids. Um, you know, a grow and eat program, something that they could learn about food and, and the earth and natural resources. And he said, uh, yes, actually, I will let me get back to you on that. And so that was pretty much how this whole thing began. Um, maybe a year or so later, he uh, got back to me and said, you know, can we schedule a meetup and let's talk about it and see how we can uh, collaborate and make something wonderful happen here. And so um, we did. That initial meeting was between Dr. Murray, myself, and uh, Heather Zimmerman. And now, <clears throat> here we are. Um, we've, um, we began this project about two years ago. And we were inter it was interrupted by the pandemic. So it never um, really came to full fruition. So we're beginning it again now with you know, the hopes that uh, it will. Um, uh, so the Eat and Grow, Exact Grow and Eat program um, really focuses on um, the earth as a natural resource and how it provides for us. And then in return, how we um, as humans can um, provide for the earth, how it nurtures us and how we can nurture it. And then um, what we can grow from it and um, smart choices in terms of growing food and eating food and um, building a better, um, better life for ourselves as we, um, and as our youth especially, um, grow into, and, um, into a brave new world. So I'm excited about the potential of this project. I look forward to it. I love working with, um, with kids. And um, actually, they learn, um, but I also learn as well from them. Thank you. Once okay. again, thank you okay. to our partners at Arbury. We are so looking forward to working with you and seeing our young people grow in so many ways. We're also excited about our Howard University connection. So we're going to transition from in live to virtual. We have Dr. Philip Curian on our Zoom feed today. He is the principal investigator and founding director of the quantum biology lab at Howard University. Thank you so much, Dr. Murray. Can everyone hear me okay? So uh, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. My name is Philip Curian. I am the principal investigator and founding director of the Quantum Biology Lab at Howard University in Washington, DC. Um, Howard University, as some of you may know, know, is a historically black university founded in 1867. We are the largest producer of on-campus African-American PhDs in the United States. Um, we also have a huge research facility on Georgia Avenue right in the center of downtown Washington, DC um, that was just opened up a few years ago that has cutting edge quantum sciences, cutting edge uh, biological sciences. And what my group does is we work at the intersection of those fields to produce new knowledge. So 
this is a really special moment for me to see the students and teachers at Rowan Elementary. Not too long ago, um, I stood in your shoes, not just as a student, but as a teacher in the school district of Philadelphia. I taught at Simon Gratz High School, um, where Dr. Murray was a teacher coach. Um, <laughs> and when he was a teacher coach to me, he was my mentor, just like I'm sure as principal at Rowan, he is a leader and a mentor to all of the students and teachers there. But one thing I did really learn when I was a, a teacher in the school district teaching kids is that uh, quantum physics is hard, but quality teaching is much harder. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was inspired each and every day by the commitment, the grit, the determination, I know how difficult it is to get up each and every day and to combat all the challenges that you face um, to do the great work that you do with those kids. And I am uh, motivated and inspired by the fact that now we have this partnership because of my relationship with Dr. Murray um, that Howard University and the Quantum Biology Lab can give back to the students at William Rowan and in the School District of Philadelphia. So another lesson I learned while I was teaching was that students don't care what you know until they know that you care. So this is our definition of how the Quantum Biology Lab and Howard University shows that we care. And we hope that in this partnership between the Quantum Biology Lab and the Quantum STEAM Lab, we can really design and build new knowledge together. So... Um, why are the quantum sciences important? Many of you may not even be familiar with the word quantum. Um, you may be familiar with the word, but not what the concept means, right? So I like to, you know, one of the mottos that I've learned from my mentors and that has we've embraced in the quantum biology lab is only those who see the invisible can do the impossible. So if you want to be able to do things that others say are impossible, then you need to make sure that you can see those things that other people say they cannot see. And that's what the quantum world is all about, seeing things that we cannot see, going beyond the tools of our eyes to use microscopes and other tools that are even beyond the light microscopes you've seen to apply to see parts of the world that we never thought existed before. So while you may know the applications of quantum science in your mobile phone, electronics, none of these things would be possible without the quantum world. The quantum world also helps us understand how plants harvest energy from the sun to design better solar cells. Or we can use quantum science to manipulate chemistry that occurs in water, the matrix of all life processes on Earth. And hopefully one day, um, ultimately, quantum science may help us to understand how are we as human beings formed from atoms and subatomic particles. This is the stuff of the stars. So there's a lot of problems that uh, you students at Rowan Elementary are going to be working on in the quantum sciences. There is a revolution occurring right now in the computational sciences and quantum computing is going to change how we think about problems that computers can solve and also the limits of what we can do in the sciences. Um, there right now are satellites going around the earth that are teleporting information from photons on satellites to ground stations on earth to build a quantum internet that is secure beyond our classical communication system. This is something that uh, we need to be ready for, and William Rowan students are going to be ready for because of the Quantum STEAM Lab. So I really see the QSL as the beginning of a nationwide movement in K-12 education, integrating virtual reality tools, immersive learning experiences, and even neuroscience-informed pedagogy to promote deep engagement with conceptual knowledge. These are conversations that Dr. Murray has always been involved in, was always trying to get us to think about brain-based tools for teaching. And now we have both the data and the science to inform the way we teach kids and the way kids learn through these scientific tools. So I wanted to take just one moment to appreciate the A 
in STEAM that our young scholar uh, introduced us to in the STEAM lab. Because without the arts, without philosophy, without an understanding of what it means to be human, all of our science, our technology, our engineering, and our mathematics are just tools. And they can be used for our own destruction as well as our benefit. So we must learn what to value through the arts. Um, I want to leave you with uh, a final thought that knowledge is indeed power, but it must start where you are. So you must know yourself. So many centuries ago, and, and I love how Dr. Murray teed this up at the beginning, uh, but people came from all over the world, the Mediterranean and beyond, to visit the black pharaohs and scholars of Egypt, to learn from their wonders and appreciate their gifts. What we did then, we can do again, and we are doing now. So people of color have contributed essentially and profoundly to our understanding of modern science. And it goes way back, even before George Washington Carver, before race was even created to the ancient peoples of Persia, Mesoamerica, Ethiopia, the Arab world, India, China, and elsewhere. And this is the, the legacy that we have from humanity. It is a legacy of science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And it's something that William Rowan walks in today. So what wonders will Rowan students produce for the world to take note and marvel? I cannot wait to see. But of course, I fully expect in a few years, several of you will be applying and matriculating at Howard University to join the quantum biology lab as quantum scientists. But that's another story for another day. And uh, I'll, I'll turn it back to the MC and Dr. Murray for, for continuation. Thank you so much for your time and uh, congratulations to all the students at William Rowan. And thank you very much for your, your words. And I really appreciate the relationship that we have cultivated over the years. And I just can't wait to see how our students benefit. We will now have our featured speaker, uh, Dr. Georgia Dunstan, a professor emerita and senior advisor in the quantum biology laboratory at Howard University. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, we can. Um, I want to, first of all, uh, I'm guilty of having the little technical glitch at the beginning, and uh, that's because of the generation that I am in, which I will get to later. But at any rate, hello, uh, Rowan Elementary School. Dr. Murray, thank you so much for this invitation to be a part of what I do consider a historic event. And that is the, the dedication ceremony of this quantum STEAM lab, truly historic. Uh, I unfortunately missed the first few minutes of the program uh, where I missed the students who defined STEAM for us and Dr. Murray's opening comments. But I will begin with my talk, uh, which I have uh, included on slides, which is an occupational hazard for a lecturer. So I have some pictures for you to look at. Uh, but since we are dealing with virtual <laughs> reality, uh, I will go to my slides now. Um, so I'm going to share this. Okay, Ash, my assistant, Ashton, thank you for sharing the screen here. This overview slide is of my talk for this event, the dedication ceremony for the um, quantum steam um, laboratory. And I love the icons that you have, Dr. Murray, for, uh, for the laboratory, uh, which is what I use to order the slides that I prepare for this talk. The first three slides will deal with the event itself and will recognize the one responsible for the event and the target of the event, which of course is the Rowan Elementary School. My last three slides will, uh, the first three 
dealt with the dedication ceremony, as I said. The last three will deal with the topic of this talk, Gen Z. That's you, Rowan Elementary School, Gen Z. So I will talk for a few minutes about Gen Z for AI. Now, the going term for AI today is artificial intelligence. So Gen Z for artificial intelligence. However, I will introduce you to the deep meaning of AI, which instead of artificial intelligence, I call authentic intelligence, which is intelligence that you Gen Zers will be dealing with. Next slide, Ashley. Yes, I want to first acknowledge Dr. James Murray as the principal of Rowan for this wonderful uh, quantum steam lab. I love again the icons and I like to, if we go from left to right, I'll begin with the end, which is a symbol of a computer for we are dealing with indeed computer based uh, knowledge, computer based, the computer as a tool. For let's go back to the beginning now, we show a flask, a chemistry flask, what we're using the computer as a tool to examine the deep structure of life, which is biochemistry with the deep structure of biochemistry being physics. And so, and physics leading us to the quantum level. For Philip is the director of the quantum laboratory, biology laboratory. So we see this icon of a, an image of a person looking through the lens. So we're dealing with virtual reality or the deep structure of life. And then we have the, the tools that represent, represent engineering and that cannot be completed without the, the easel that, that represents the arts. And as Philip so aptly stated, the arts, we need to deal with the philosophy as well as the science that impacts our life today. Next slide. Dr. Murray, I congratulate you for obtaining the, uh, the Linson um, Principal, Distinguished Principal Award for this lab. Now Gen Z for AI. As I said, this is Generation Z for authentic intelligence. Next slide, Ashlyn, please. Generation Z, that's you. And I put this slide up here. Who is Generation Z? Let's start at the bottom. The youngest generation, those who were born in 2011, and at the oldest in this group would be six years, is called Gen Alpha. So we're beginning with the beginning of the Greek alphabet. G Alpha, the beginning. But the, the next generation after those born now is indeed your generation, Generation Z. Many of you were born between 1996 and 2010, and you are now in elementary school and uh, in standard uh, ages beginning at seven with the oldest age at, uh, finishing uh, high school and many finishing college. So Generation Z is your generation, it's your time, it's your focus of today's talk. Your parents represent the millennials and my generation is the oldest generation, the one at the top, the baby boomers. So we are going to focus on Generation Z, and this information is coming to you from a baby boomer generation. Okay, next slide, Ashton, please. Uh, so what defines Gen Z? I put this slide in just to bring your attention to the time that you were born in. You're all born in the 2000s, which represents what we call the third millennium. 2000K, we call this the 2K, which stands for the millennia of the mind. I like to say this is 
the time where we begin to delve into the deep structure of the mind, how we think, how we believe, how we behave, the millennia of the mind. This has come about with the evolution of the science of the brain, as Philip say. The science of the brain is giving us new information into how the mind functions. So I like to call the third millennia the human genome era. So I'm not sure if you heard the term genome before, but the genome is the complete set of instructions that each of us inherits from each of our parents for how to make, how to make this human body and how to form and how to operate this body. So I will not go through all the decades, but simply say that we, the Gen Z generation, is the third millennia. You were all born in 2000 at some point, and you've already been a, a, become a part of the decade of discovery. And the decade of discovery, which, which was from 2000 to 2010, is when the genome was completely uh, uh, sequenced as a project. And we have all the information through science now for how to make the human body and how to operate the human body. And this project was initiated so we could understand why disease occurs and how disease occurs and have the information about how to fix disease in the body. That is the scientific discovery of our time. And as you continue to age, you will be a part of the decade of discern, deliverance, discernment, decision, dedication, and dominion, leading us to ultimately to our destiny, why this human body was made, the philosophy again of who we are, but not only who we are, but why we are, to go with the science of how we are. And from there, it's timeless. Next slide, please. Timeless, leading us to our divine eternal. So the, um, the take home point for my time, thank you for this third millennium, quantum genome knowledge reflects what has already been said that your generation, this Gen Z generation is moving us through science from the deep structure of subatomic invisible levels of life through the microscopic visible realm of physical reality reality to understand ourselves as human beings, who we are, why we are, and what we are. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Wow. Thank you, Dr. Dunstan, for those inspiring words and for our parents and guardians and our students. Most of our students already know this because they reviewed your biography, Dr. Dunstan, but maybe others out there in the world who are watching by way of YouTube do not know that Dr. Georgia Dunstan is the first African-American to receive a PhD in genetics. She is a living legend. And we thank you, Dr. Dunstan, for your work. I, I should quickly correct. That's the in human genetics, PhD in human genetics. There are many that had genetics. <laughs> okay. Thank you for correcting me. Human yeah. genetics. Thank <laughs> human you. Human genetics, yes. We know you we know, <laughs> listen, we love the canine and we love the other <laughs> species. But thank you for correcting me, human genetics. Yes. We have one or two questions from a few of our third grade students. So we're gonna ask them to come on now and and you can leave it the way it is. Come on now and ask their question. And then we'll have either Dr. Dunstan or Dr. Carey an answer. Go ahead, please. You gotta speak to Good morning. Good morning. Are you a medical doctor? Need to be a little louder. Good morning. Are you a medical doctor? The question was, okay. Dr. Dunstan, are you a medical doctor? No. I am not a medical doctor, but thank you for that question because I am a PhD, which stands for a doctor of philosophy, a doctor of philosophy, one who is a, a professional research scientist. PhDs are those who have extensive knowledge, extensive knowledge in a given area. Uh, so the, I am a doctor of philosophy, one steeped in knowledge. 
of human genetics and the human genome. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. Good morning. Can children come to see you? What happens when they come? <laughs> Well, uh, Dr. Um, Curian, um, I, you might also comment because Dr. Curian indicated that the quantum biology lab is on the campus of Howard University in Washington, D.C. And yes, by all means, children can come to see and we welcome children. We believe firmly that let the children come as a dictum for you are the future and you will be leading the way. So yes, you can come indeed. And the children shall lead the way to the future. Thank you very much students for your questions. Thank you for your question. I'm gonna ask all of our students who are here present to come over with me. We're now going to have our ribbon cutting ceremonies with all the children stand right over here. Right. The cameras can see. All of these phenomenal young people, our budding scientists and engineers, they're all here. Okay. Wonderful. So we're now ready to dedicate our quantum steam lab. We'll do that by cutting the ribbon. I am going to have a student do it. Let's see. Oh. Come on, why don't you go ahead and take those scissors and cut the ribbon, make sure they can see. Stand to the side, son. Go ahead, go ahead and cut them. Let's clap, let's clap. Outstanding, outstanding. We are so excited, we're so excited about this opportunity. Students, you can now go back to your stations. We're gonna call Madison back. She is going to take us on a tour. Each student has been asked to share something for about one minute each group. So Madison is going to take over. Nice and loud, students. Okay, now we are going to start with Eugene. He's a fifth grader and he's going to start with math, um, magnetism. So magnet, magnets are, they, magnets have a magnetic field and anything it comes in contact with that is either like metal, it will stick to it. And I have a demonstration. I have a whole bunch of metal beads in a container, and then I have four magnets hooked up to the bottom. And because it has a, because magnets have a magnetic field, they don't even have to touch it for it to come close to it or for it to connect to it. It just has to come near it, or the magnet can push it. Um, magnets have a north and south pole. If you try to connect a north pole and a north pole, they will repel each other because they won't try to connect to the same. They won't try to connect try to connect to the same side. And if but if you connect a north pole to the south pole, they will connect. So the demonstration I have here is I have one metal bead out of the container, and even though it isn't touching it you can drag this over and it'll still connect to it even though it isn't touching it. And that is my demonstration. Um, and now we are going to go to Mensa and Jaden. They are, they are engineering with Lego. Legos are something that's like you could be creative with. You could do anything with Legos if you put your mind to it. Like we build some cars over here. We all build some cars. We even be creative with it. And then we separated all the Legos after we was done. We built one of these cars. I, I don't know, um, but this car was the hardest car to build, I think. Then we build this car. And then the last car we built was this. Legos can be used for many things 
And as you saw, Legos can be used to create things like cars. You can create houses. You can create almost anything out of Legos. And now I'm going to give the mic to Sage and Christian. They are doing 3D virtual rea um, visual art. Basically, this is what we're doing. We're making copper wire on our bracelet. Then we add lights to it. And then we use batteries to power them. This is, is an example of what we did. Some of them don't work, and some of them do. <laughs> like, some of them don't even turn on because of the batteries are dead. And basically, you can make anything with out of them. We made bracelets out of them, and they turn on with the uh, magnet because when the battery is touching the copper wire and the two pieces of it and you add a magnet to make it connect it turns it powers it on just like these glasses thank you and now we are going to work with the right and in me <laughs> and i'm here hello my name is Lorraine timmons and i will be doing the robotics part of the steam yard so today, I will be showing you Spyro's little boat box, and also I will be showing you Ozobot. So here are some Ozobot code explained. A tornado code is red, green, red, and another green. This code causes an Ozobot to slowly spin clockwise and then speed up after two rotations, and it, it will continue forward. The Spyro bot has matrix animations that make them change on the matrix animation on the top. You can change the way that they can go. You can also change the speed of them. They have LED lights attached to them. They also have back LED lights. For a demonstration, command on it. You can also change the colors. You can change their speed. You should see a classroom of these with uh, 10 children and 10 iPods. It's really fun. <laughs> but their creativity is amazing when it comes to coding with the blocks and using the Spiros and Ozobots. And Madison did it as well. And we've programmed these little Ozobots. These are controlled by little codes. Like, if we had green, red, and green, that would be line jump left. But if we have red, black, and red, that will be slow. So. If we program, if we program these, these will actually move on the black lines. They are programmed to move like that, and they are they are controlled by codes and systems built in in their bodies. And if there's one thing I learned about older bots, is that they're really tiny, so don't step on them. And the the boat the boats they are like really really big and you control them and aim them um, but you have to place the boats on the floor and aim the red aim the blue button at you so wherever you are face it to you and then you could just drive it 
or you can program it. It's up to you. You can move it around and <laughs> we made little anime things that it control. We, like I made a heart and we could drive it around. I know. I and um thank you and that was all. And last but not least, we have Cameron. He is working with virtual reality. He is a fourth grader here at Rowan. These are our VR devices. They, these allow you to see the solar system. They allow you to see the earth, the moon, the sun, and the stars. One more time, let's give our boys and girls a round of applause for the great work that they're doing in our STEAM lab. All right, we're going to have a few remarks. We're just about done, everyone. We're going to call on the CEO of the fund, Ms. Donna Frisbee Greenwood, to offer remarks. Uh, following her, we're going to call on the assistant superintendent for the School District of Philadelphia, Ms. Constance Horton. Ms. Greenwood. Thank you, Dr. Murray. Um, it's so exciting to be here. Oftentimes we fund things and we don't get a chance to see them. Um, so I just wanna thank you all for inviting me to join you today for the dedication of the Quantum Lab. And uh, we are elated about the partnership that you have with Howard University and, and Aubrey Ar Arboretum. Um, this is exactly the kind of work that we are looking to fund, and we work on partnerships on behalf of the school district, as well as um, funding ideas. And it is critically important that we fund ideas that our principals and our school leaders and our school teachers have. And that's what the Lindback Foundation has been doing for the district for a number of years. And because our principals and our teachers know best what our students need to learn, grow, and thrive. And so we are just delighted to be here. And what you didn't know, Dr. Murray, is that while I was an English major, I was a physics minor um, in undergrad. So I am especially excited about this lab and hope to be back soon. Ms. Horton. Thank you. I just wanna say on behalf of the entire uh, school district of Philadelphia, we are extremely excited about the opportunity that exists here. Um, I want to acknowledge and appreciate Dr. Murray's vision and insight, his passion, but the passion of the entire Rowan Elementary School leadership team has been incredible. The dedication of the teachers here is admirable. And this initiative really shows um, a respect for the brilliance of the children of Rowan Elementary School um, that is inspiring. So young people, you're doing a fabulous job. I can't wait to see what you do in the future with this lab and where you take these ideas and the creativity and, and all of the work you do in this space and in this building into the future. Um, I also wanna acknowledge all of the partnerships. Thank you. They are important to developing our children and the future of our nation. Um, and so we are so appreciative of the collaboration. Dr. Murray, again, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for coming. This has been a phenomenal day in the journey called the William Rowan School. I do want to highlight Dr. Kirian, Dr. Dunstan. I wish you were here because I want you to look at this beautiful cake that has the logo on it. Hopefully, <laughs> Mrs. Ford can get a close up on this cake. It's a three dimensional cake. Wow. It is absolutely, <laughs> absolutely beautiful. On each cupcake is the logo. Wow. If I could ship one to you, wow. Dr. Curry, and I would. <laughs> On the cake, there's, there's a calculator, 
Uh, you know, there's some artwork, a little art palette, and, and obviously uh, we have our, our, our science flash there. So it is going to be enjoyed by the students. I promise each and every student they can take a cupcake who are in here <laughs> present and we'll cut the cake and just have a great time celebrating where we're going. Dr. Curie and I had a conversation just yesterday, and the first project we're thinking about is how do we take young people on a journey through the day or the second? or the picosecond of an electron. We want our young people to become an electron and think about what would it be like to live a picosecond as an electron. So we're excited about this work. I look forward to the scientists at Howard University, Dr. Kirian, to all the scientists, our colleagues, thank you so much. We're already receiving great, great information from the quantum scientists at Howard. Uh, again, thank you again for our parents, our family, our friends, those who are watching. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to showing you the great things that are coming out of the William Rowan community. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Murray. Thank you. I must give Madison the last word. And now we are going to give a round of applause to Nigel and Anala. <laughs> <laughs> now just give everybody a round of applause. <laughs>